Hi guys, here is a small review and teardown of the Northridge Flex USB tester. Uh, it's the model number Unity UT658 Dual, and I bought it from the Northridge Flex uh, webshop for 29 US dollars. So let's have a look what's inside the package. So we have the tester itself and a small user guide, but this is just in in Chinese, so uh, I have a link to the specifications uh, in the descriptions down below in the comments. Um, here on the back side, you can also see uh, the specifications and the voltage range and all the possibilities with this device. So the tester itself, it comes with a USB. A port and a USB-C port and they just go straight through to another USB-C port and another USB-A port so you cannot change uh, the cable from USB-A to USB-C let's try and hook it up I have here my USB multifunction charger and I will use this QC 3.0 port here so let's hook it up and see what happens. So you see the light comes on here. There's a backlight on the display. And what we can see is the voltage is 5.24 volts coming out of the charger. And we see the current is zero and we can see the milliamp hours and we can see the time. The time will start when we put a load on. With the mode button we can switch between different modes we can see the watt hours the internal um, resistance of the test device and we can see the voltages on the d plus and d minus wires of the usb port so this with the milliamp hours and the watt hours that's useful when you want to discharge a battery and uh, measure the characteristics of battery, for example. Let's try and hook up a load and see if the timer starts. I have this small processor board here. Let's try and hook that up to the, the USB-A port. And uh, we see the light comes on and uh, the current draw is uh, 50 milliamps here and we see that the timer started. With the read button, it's possible to save different values when you are in the process of charging a device or discharging a device. And there are up to uh, 10 places where you can store values. And now, right now we see it's uh, using the USB-A port. Uh, in this device, there's no trigger on the USB port to re make a request of uh, higher voltages. Uh, that has to come from the device itself that we are charging. We can try and uh, charge a mobile phone and see what happens. I have a mobile phone up here and uh, a connect uh, USB-A connector here. And uh, let's try and charge and see and now you see that the voltages changed or the measured voltage came up to 9.2 volts here. And it's charging with 1.64 amps. And uh, we also see here on the display, it's um, giving out nine volts. I tried to do some measurements on the tester itself. Uh, so here in the spreadsheet, you can actually see how precise it is. Um, in the first column here, we can see the voltages. Uh, there's no load on the device. And you see that the, the output voltages actually match the input voltages. Here in the second column, we see different uh, load values uh, on, and different voltages. And you can see that there is a slight uh, voltage drop in the device itself. Uh, because of the internal resistance of the tester and the internal resistance of the tester is approximately 110 milliohm. Let's have a look inside and see how uh, this was made.
So let's have a look here inside the USB tester itself. So here on the back side, we just have four simple screws. Let's remove them. Like that, and now we just need to pry these two parts from each other. And here we have the lid with the two switches. And here we have some integrated strain relief, two wires coming in. And here on the top side, we see the two wires coming in, the A port and the C port. And the A port has four wires. They can carry up to three amps. And the C port here can carry up to five amps. And that's the reason for these a bit thicker wires for the power. And we see the connectors have has just been soldered directly into the PCB. And here we see the display and it has it is being held in place with these or held in place with these four screws here in each corner and the signals to the display are transferred with via these uh, zebra connectors here and the two output power ports on the back side we have uh, quite a few smd parts and here we have the main CPU, and that's uh, Sonic's uh, SN8F57082. And you can find the, the description or the data sheet in the link down below. And here we have a 32.768 kilohertz crystal for the MCU. And here we see the display driver. Apparently the part number has been sent it away. And here we see the power coming from the C port, quite thick wire, a trace, and down to two MOSFETs before the power goes out here. And the power for the A port is here going down to these MOSFETs here and then out to the A connector. And the reason why they have these MOSFETs here are if the voltage gets too high or the current gets too high, then they can turn on, on, uh, on and off uh, the, the power to each port. And quite interesting, yeah, it's very interesting actually. Here we have a 10 milliohm current sense resistor and it's placed on the low side uh, in the ground trace. So instead of having a current sense resistor for the A port and one for the C port, then they just have a common one here in the ground trace. Yeah, and just a, a few resistors. So not a much, but very cheap to produce, but the quality is okay. And it uh, works like a charm. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, see you in the next one. Bye.